Welcome to making video games with Python lesson three. In this video, we're going to introduce a new concept called the game loop, which will allow us to play the game as long as the game is not over. So let's get to it. All right, so we're going to go into our folder and we're going to open our code from the previous video. And just to run it, just to see what we get. So with this one line where we created a variable game, which was a game object of a particular width, height, and a title, we are able to get this window. Now, I'm not sure if you've tried this. If you tried to close out this window, you notice it doesn't close because uh, right now our game is not able to interact uh, with us. And that's what we're going to handle with the game loop. The only way you can close the window now is to go to the shell and literally close out the shell that's running the window. So this game loop, kind of like the name implies, we need a loop, uh, something that's going to repeat code as long as the game is not over. Now, unlike a for loop, we're going to have to introduce a different type of loop called the while loop. And a while loop repeats things as long as a condition is being met. And the condition we're looking for is that the game is not over. And that's what we're going to write. So you might be interested as to where this game.over is coming from. So if we go to our game library, again, we've created a, a variable. Is that a little bit? A variable game that is a game object which means anything that's part of this class is available to us. And if you look inside the init function, which allowed us to create the game object, you'll see that there's a variable called over. Uh, this variable over uh, is available to us to play for exactly this reason, uh, in order to determine if the game is over. And you can see here that it's being set to false, which kind of makes sense when the game first starts, the game isn't over, <laughs> we want to actually play it. The other thing you'll notice is that the word self is here. Yet over here, we use the word game. Again, this is a little bit of the mechanics of how Python uh, creates classes. So please ignore the word self. Again, that has to do with how Python implements classes. Uh, but realize that what comes next, these variables, uh, you know, debug, col uh, collision border, font, left, top, these are all available to you uh, once you've created a variable that is a game object. All right, so let's go ahead and continue on. And one of the things we want to do inside our game loop is to process input. <clears throat> now, can, can I reviewing what we just talked about? Notice that I'm using the word, the variable game in front. And this, because it has parentheses at the end, kind of lets you know this is a function. So let's go find this process input function. Uh, it's got to be somewhere in this game class. <clears throat> and as you as I'm scrolling down, hopefully you can see, you know, there's a lot of code that needs to go into, you know, doing, doing certain things that, uh, that you have to write with Pygame. Again, this library was created to ease that interaction with Pygame and simply focus on the logic of your game. So here's your process input, which will process your keyboards, it will process your mouse, as well as your joystick. So again, think about all this code that, that you have to write, but it's being all handled with one line of code. Again, just to kind of sell you again on the idea as to why this game library is so useful. The next thing we want to do after we process our input is to update our game. So let's go find this game update function. Oh, it's right here. And what you'll notice that when you call update, it has a parameter of FPS, which currently is gets set to one. Uh, you can change this to let's say 30. And what this will do is that this will update your game 30 times in one second. And this essentially is your game loop, but there's one more function I want to call which is game.quit. And let's go ahead and find that one. Again, just to constantly make that connection that these things have to exist somewhere and they're existing in this game library. 
So game.quit simply calls pygame.quit. Uh, but again, it's a nice way to kind of hide uh, all the pygame code within other functions. All right, so let's give this a try. And again, we haven't done much with the game, but we will. We do have one additional capability that we didn't have before. If I want to close out the game, I can now click on the X. All right. And again, the main thing for that was this process input, because now we are processing the keyboard, the joystick, uh, as well as the mouse. So let's go back to our presentation. Let's review what we've done. So in this video, uh, we introduced the game loop, which was a while loop that kept repeating as long as the game wasn't over. Inside the while loop, we did two commands. Uh, we processed the input, which processes our keyboard, our mouse, and our joystick, and we also updated the game uh, with a particular frames per second, which shows 30. The last thing we did once we got out of the loop, once the game was over, is simply to quit the game. And what that does is that does some cleaning up of resources once the game is over. So hopefully you're excited about creating your first game, Zombie Thanksgiving, and enjoy.